Welcome to Module 3 of PHE Canada's Health Promoting Schools e-learning program, Making It Happen. Modules 1 and 2 have answered some critical questions about health promoting schools. A. What is a health promoting school? B. Why is it important to create health promoting schools in Canada? And C. What are the core components of a health promoting school? In Module 3, we will cover the practical requirements to make it happen in your school community. Planning for and adopting a health-promoting school approach requires a different way of structuring decisions. In a 2011 article published in Health Promotion International, Doug Gleddy, professor of elementary education at the University of Alberta, pointed to the need to consider health promotion in everyday decisions to make it the way we work. Creating that kind of change will require effort initially. Once up and running, like all change, it becomes the natural way we do things. In a health-promoting school environment, everyday decisions focus on three interconnected areas of action. Creating a healthy school environment that fosters learning and growth. Defining and supporting healthy relationships and connections with peers, teachers, and other school staff. Providing learning opportunities to build new skills and apply them to practice healthy behaviors. It will require a shift in school policies and practices that takes into account the health and well-being of students, their families, and school staff. A whole school approach incorporates healthy practices and experiences in how the school operates, its structures, policies, learning programs, and community partnerships. Consistency is the key. Let's use healthy eating for example. Healthy school policies ensure that healthy food choices are made available at the school and are integrated into classroom learning. It integrates experiential learning about health into other topics such as math and science. A school community garden is a great example of how math and science can be incorporated into learning about healthy food production. The school makes healthy snack choices available. Healthy schools seek opportunities to work in partnerships with healthy food providers on fundraisers and school events. The whole school commitment is to promote health and healthy choices through all aspects of school life and beyond. Living healthy, of course, includes physical activity and fitness. Physical literacy describes the ability to develop the self-awareness required to make healthy, active choices. The earlier that physical literacy is introduced, the more likely it is to shape future behaviors. To learn more about physical literacy and access program ideas, click on the link at PHE Canada. A whole school approach to healthy schools includes policies that focus on the whole person. Schools post online resources for students like the Safe Schools Toolkit referenced here. A whole school approach addresses both students' physical and emotional health. Inviting partnerships with stakeholders, students, parents, health partners, staff, community groups, provides insights from those who are informed about student and staff health challenges. Important lessons learned reported from Alberta's Battle River Healthy School Project were to involve stakeholders early and for the entire project, Listen to and value their opinions, experience, and community wisdom. Diverse perspectives and teamwork are crucial to successful adoption of a whole school approach. Teachers play a critical role in both defining healthy school needs and priorities as well as in the successful implementation. Representation and input from other staff such as the school food services is essential since healthy eating choices are central to a healthy school community. When students and their families are involved in creating school policies and share feedback about how those policies are followed, greater engagement and commitment follows. Equally important is active leadership from school administration, since this communicates the importance and priority of the school health. Successful healthy school leaders build and support the relationships needed to create and fulfill the school's vision. School leaders' roles are to Identify stakeholder skills. Engage stakeholders and community members in planning. Embed health and well-being throughout the whole school. And create and support a positive school culture. 
the power of a shared commitment to a common purpose can create lasting and meaningful change. Creating internal relationships with students, families, and staff is essential to getting started with your health-promoting school. Sustaining and expanding your school capacity requires external relationships as well. Collaborating with other, like-minded schools allows for shared learning and best practices. Local health partners and government agencies have a shared interest in the health of the community and could have valuable resources to share. Collaborating with health-minded community groups, running clubs, sports organizations, yoga and fitness groups, student leadership groups. Partnering with businesses who align with and support the goals of healthy schools. It is important to remember that the school itself has resources. Space, for example, access to which could be valuable to potential partners. Health-promoting schools work to expand their available resources through partnering, both inside and outside the school. To learn more about creating community partnerships, check out the link. Data about your current situation is the begin point. This assessment should bring into focus the health priorities of your school. Involving stakeholders and gathering the information not only speeds things up, but it creates buy-in and energy for the process. Students, staff, families, and external health partners all can play a role in gathering data. With the data in hand, the planning team assesses the health strengths of the school, as well as the needs. While there may be a number of needs, it will likely be necessary to define the school's health priorities. By prioritizing what is most important, you ensure that your available resources are targeting the areas of greatest importance. Finally, summarizing and communicating your opportunities will help build understanding and create student and staff buy-in. In addition to these four steps, taking time to communicate what is happening will keep your school informed about the process. At each major step, remember to communicate what is happening. Adopting a healthy school approach requires changes to existing school policies and practices. Change is much more easily accepted when those who are impacted by it have helped shape what it will look like. That is why collecting data through student surveys and school assessments is so important. Using the school's data allows for the tailoring of policy and practice to your school's unique needs. The energy that sustains the commitment to change is also important. An internal champion of your Healthy School initiative is essential. This role is often filled by someone at the school who feels passionate about healthy living and student well-being. Committed to the change, the champion can motivate others to participate and sets an example through her or his own action. To learn more about the role of champion, click on the link below. As we have discussed, the process for implementing your plan starts with assessing your school's strengths and needs. With the data in hand, engaging your planning team to actively participate in the planning process will encourage diverse perspectives from student, staff, family representatives, and leadership as you define the vision for your healthy school and the strategies to support it. Creating the action steps to implement the strategies provides a roadmap to track progress toward implementing your healthy school approach. The real change, of course, occurs in the implementation of the plan, when action is taken and its impact felt by those involved. That is why regularly evaluating what is working and making the necessary adjustment along the way is so important. Finally, celebrating success, especially the quick wins early in the process, is so vital to ongoing success. Setting aside time for review, evaluation, adjustment, and celebration all contribute to making a successful and lasting shift to a healthy school approach. Engaging members of the Healthy Schools team means actively involving them in forming and improving healthy school planning. An engaged group of active members expands the capacity of and commitment to the healthy school planning and implementation process. The school champion and school leadership both play an important role in welcoming input and gaining that engagement. At each stage of your assessment, planning, and implementation processes, build in a plan to effectively communicate with your stakeholders. 
This will likely mean using multiple communication methods to reach different groups. Communicating openly and often helps to keep the Healthy School Initiative top of mind. It also ensures that as changes occur, as they invariably do, both the change and the rationale are shared with the school community in a timely way. At this point, we have been focused on the planning process. Implementation success depends on engaging the whole school community. Making it fun is critical. Look for ways to get participants laughing and engaged. Avoid overcomplicating information. Target it to the needs of the audience. Keep it simple. Make it possible for everyone to participate at some level. Eliminate participation barriers. Finally, involve everyone. Make an effort to find an active role for each participant. Once in place, the planning cycle gets easier to replicate as each year you engage in evaluating what has changed and make revisions accordingly. Remember to appreciate and thank all who are involved and have contributed to the project's success. Keep building positive energy. We have covered the process for making a health-promoting school approach a reality for your school. Now is a good time to take a moment and reflect on the current situation at your school. The following questions are adapted from the Healthy School Planner, a document developed by the University of Waterloo working with the Joint Consortium for School Health. This survey planning document consists of a series of questions that can be used to assess your current strengths as well as to plan for your school's healthy school approach. The following four reflection questions focus on how to plan for and implement a health-promoting school approach at your school. As key stakeholders in the success of a healthy school approach, student involvement as leaders in your school is important. Please take a moment and reflect on how often students play a leadership role in organizing activities at your school. The degree to which health is integrated into both the curriculum and extracurricular activities is an important measure of a health-promoting school. Please take a moment and reflect on how these statements apply at your school. In order to achieve success, a health-promoting school regularly measures its progress toward creating a healthy school community. Please take a moment and reflect on how often this happens at your school. A health-promoting school approach includes a regular review of health-related policies and practices to determine what is working and what is not. Please take a moment and reflect on how often this happens at your school. If your school is involving students in your healthy school planning efforts, integrated health across multiple types of programming and services, regularly measuring progress toward becoming a health-promoting school, and revising policies and practices accordingly, then congratulations! You have taken important steps toward establishing a health-promoting school approach. If you need help with getting started or expanding your health-promoting school initiative, PHE Canada is ready to support you in your efforts. Click on the website link to learn more about how PHE Canada can help. We have shared with you the process used by schools to plan for and implement a health-promoting school. In our fourth and final module, we will discuss and share resources available to you to help establish a health-promoting school approach at your school. Thank you for your participation. This e-learning module has been brought to you by Physical and Health Education Canada with the generous financial support of the Lawson Foundation.